Any questions on Home 17? No, no questions on Home 17? Everybody's okay with this graphing of polynomial functions? Anything? Yes, no. Raise your hand if you're okay with graphing polynomial functions. Hello? Are you still hear me? Can you hear me? Jackie, can you hear me? Jackie, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. So please raise your hand if you are okay with graphing polynomial functions. Wait, what did you say? I said raise your hand if you are okay with graphing polynomial functions. Okay. How about you, Josh? Oops, uh, kind of, not really. Not really, okay. All right, let's, um, let's quickly review. A zero of a polynomial is just what makes the quantity zero. So for example, if you look at x times x plus 1, how would you sketch the graph of x times x plus 1? x equals 0 and x equals negative 1 will make that equal to 0. So those are your zeros. And then to sketch the graph, all you have to do is plot points or use your fact that x times x is x squared. So both ends are facing up. And so you will draw your graph like this. So insert. Actually, let's get a... I'm going to get a grid. So to sketch a graph here, you first need to plot your intercepts. So that would be at 0 and negative 1. Oops. So 0 and negative 1, and it's x squared. Which means one end is up, and the other end is up. Both ends are up. And your graph will look like this. So up, go through here, down, turn up and up. That will be the graph of x times x plus 1. If I were to add one more quantity here, like say x minus 2, then you would enter 2 as your, let's, let's make that a 5. So then I will have 5 as an additional intercept. And your graph will have to go through that, so you would enter your, so you will start up here, go through here, down, and up, up, and down. So it has to go through the intercepts, and the degree tells you whether it just crosses becomes a straight line or bounces. Any questions there? That's like a summary of what polynomial functions look like. Any questions here? All right, so we will do some attendance quizzes here. Let's go to class 17 and let's see who is here so I can put you into groups.
All right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven of you here. And so we will make you into groups. So first, let's just tell you which problems you will be working on. This is class 17. So everybody go to class 17. And we're going to put you into two groups. The first group will work on problem number 9 and 11. And the second group will work on problem number 10 and 12. So 9 and 11 is group 1. 10 and 12 is group 2. So let's put you into groups. When you're done, we will come back and share work. Alrighty. Alrighty. How's everyone doing in this group? Isaiah, Joshua, and Owen. Yeah, I'm doing good. All right. You're gonna do. You know which problems you're gonna work on? Uh, which one was it again? I just got the worksheet. Nine and eleven. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm gonna put you in charge of the group, Josh. So when you come back, you'll be the one presenting. So I'm going to make you the moderator, OK? Which means you can share your whiteboard. My whiteboard. Yeah. So you will be the presenter for this group. All right, keep working on it. I'll come back to you in a minute or two. I'm going to go check on the other group, all right? OK. OK. Alrighty, how are you guys doing in this group? Jackie, Michael, Zataria, you're going to do problem number 10 and 12. You okay with that? Yes. All right. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Michael, can I put you in charge of the group? I'm going to make you a presenter, which means you can share your whiteboard and you can draw the graph there. How do you do the whiteboard thing? So on the bottom right so now you're a presenter so if you go there's like a little square with an arrow coming out do you see that yeah. so if you click on that then one of the options there is share whiteboard why don't you do that right now it says share blank whiteboard yeah there you go so you can draw the graph there yeah. okay and then the two of you are going to help him I'm going to give you a couple moments, and then I'll come right back to you. So I'll come back. I'm going to go check with the other group, and then I'll come back, OK? I think so. I'm not too sure. All right, Joshua, you can share your whiteboard and draw your graph there. So on the bottom right, you should see. You should see a little square with the arrow coming out. Click on that. Oh, OK. And then there should be an option that says share blank whiteboard. Click on that. Oh, OK. There you go. So and then nice. use the pen to sketch the graph. So for example, I'm going to split the screen into two. So put one problem here and one problem here, OK? So we'll say this one will be number 9, and this one will be number 11. Make sure you are using your group members to help you. On or Isela, help him. Okay. Yeah, for the first exercise, I had... Uh, Negative two to zero. Yeah, and then one zero. Yeah. And then the y intercept's just zero. Say that again. What were your intercepts for number nine? The um, negative two zero for um, the x and zero one. So negative two zero, one zero. And zero zero, there are three intercepts. Yeah. The, okay. The zero zero is the is that the y and the x? Yes. Yeah. 
Yep. And then for 10, 0, negative 1, negative 4, and 2. Oh, no, you don't have 2. You have 11, right? So negative yeah. 1, 1, and 2 are your intercepts. All right. Yep. All right, go ahead. Finish the graph. I will be back. I'll go check and see on the second group. Alrighty, how's it going here? Working on it. Okay, I'm going to split the screen here for two problems. You will put number 10 over here and number 12 over here. Okay. Alright, see what you can do. Hi, Joe. Hello. Hello. Well, people are doing group work. So let's see if I can put you in one okay. of the groups. So okay. let's see. Um, did we have, were we supposed to upload the um, review sheet today? Because I. Uh, for Tuesday. To You're talking about exam two review sheet, right? Yeah. Yeah, that will be for Tuesday. Oh, next Tuesday? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was this Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, not Tuesday. Thursday. Yeah, depends on how much we finish today. But yeah, next Tuesday is when you will upload it. Okay. By noon. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. I think I'm going to stop the group work soon, so I'll just wait. We'll just wait and have people join us, okay? I'm going to go check on them. I'll be right back. Alrighty, let's see what's happening here. Okay, is that something one? Like that. So that's for number nine. Uh, is, it, is, is that something like that? Number nine x squared and x minus two cubed. Yep. Yeah, you got it. Very good. Very good. So wait for number eleven because I want to see if people can see your. Um, so don't draw the 11 yet. Draw it when you're in the main screen, OK? OK. All right. But when the, hold on. All right, let's see what, 10 and 12. Yeah, that looks good. That looks really good. OK. So let's go to main room, and then you will tell us how you got these graphs, OK? All right. OK. All right, we're back. All right, we're all back. Let's see, is everyone back? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. OK, so what I would like you to do now is let's go to Joshua. Can you share your whiteboard for us and so we can see what you did? Oh, OK, now it's blank. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what happened. OK. I can just uh, draw. Yeah, just redraw it. All right, so here we'll have number nine. Here we'll have number 11. So first, just speak and tell us what you guys did. What did you get as your, um, and write down the function. What's the function that you're graphing for number nine? X oh, yeah, it's x. What is it? X squared. OK. Parenthesis okay. x minus 1. OK. Parenthesis x plus 2 cubed. x plus 2 cubed? Yep. All right, go ahead, sketch the graph. Josh? <laughs> All right, go ahead. Use the pencil and sketch the graph.
you need a negative 2 also. So negative 2, 0, and 1 are your intercepts. OK, keep going. Now sketch the graph. What about n behavior? n behavior will be what? Up, up. Yeah. So n behavior is y equals x to the power 6. So up, up. And then we have our cubic. Yeah, that should do it. Over here, you may want to make it a little more pronounced, so it will be more like this. Do you see what I did here? OK, 11. Yeah, a little bit more like a cubic, as opposed to here, which is just straight line. Can you see? Yeah. OK, all right, 11, which will be, yeah, read the question first. Y equals what? Parentheses. Oh, 11. X plus 1. X plus 1. And then to the third. To the third. And then X minus 1 parentheses. X minus 1 parentheses, OK. And then X minus 2 parentheses. X minus 2 parentheses. So we have negative 1 and 1 and 2 as your intercepts. All right, go ahead. Sketch the graph. How would it look? Uh, what is the end behavior going to look like? Would it, would it be up also? Or? Uh, 3, 4, 5, no, because this one is y equals x to the fifth. So left hand, left hand is down, and right hand is up. Go ahead, draw it now. Finish drawing. Josh? Yeah. Okay, sketch the graph. I don't know, like... Your group can help you. Who was in your group? Uh, Owen and... Yeah. Owen and who? Isella. Okay, Isella. Owen and Isella, help him. Uh, actually, can you, Owen, can you pick up the pencil and draw or not? Can you try? Um, Does it let oh, you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So go ahead and graph. So, mine was looking something like this. Are you drawing something? Yeah, yeah there you go. No. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Keep going. And then, it went kind of up like this. It's hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> Are you drawing something? Oh, yeah, oh, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Very good, very good. Everybody see that? Are there any questions here? Raise your hand if you have questions on what he just did. All right, beautiful. Like, why is it? Yes? It's like, why is it from the bottom and then go up? Like, Because is it to the third, that's why? Like the snake thing? Right, but you have to look at the end behavior. See the end behavior here? X to the fifth. What's the graph of X to the fifth? x to the fifth looks like this, right? Yeah. So x to the fifth graph is this graph here. So left hand is on the bottom, right hand is on the top. Left hand on the bottom, right hand on top. So these two ends oh. are the way they are because of the end behavior. OK. OK, let me get a different color here. This part here is because of the cubic. And then this part and this part is just because there's a one power here. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. 
And next one is Michael. So let's see. Michael, can you share your work? So here is number 10 and here is number 12. So 10 and 12. So first tell me what the function is. y equals what? Uh, x squared. x squared. What else? Like just read the problem. Huh? Oh, read. it's uh, h of x equals x uh, parentheses x plus 1. x plus 1. And then another set x plus 4. Okay. And then in the left set x minus 2. All right. And then for 12, it was y equals? 2 over 9. Parentheses 2x minus 1 squared, then x plus 1 cubed, and x minus 3 squared. Alrighty. So in the first one, what are your intercepts? Two. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Two, negative four, negative one. Two, negative four, negative one. And zero. Right? All right, Michael, yeah. go ahead and sketch the graph. Oh, before you do that, what about end behavior? Both ends are going up. Yeah. Tell me why. Because it's a function of x squared. Oh, yeah, not because of that. If you look carefully, it's x squared times x times oh, x. Oh, no, it's not, it's not x squared times x. It's just x. Times oh, there's no x squared? No. Oh, OK. It's just Oops. OK. All right, I don't think it lets you erase it. OK, we'll just cross it out. OK, so no well, x. Like an x, but no x squared. Oh, just x, no square. Yeah. Yeah, so it's x times x is x squared, times x is x cubed, times x is x to the 4. So that's why, so this is x, hmm, doesn't let you, y equals x to the 4. So that's why it's up, up, like you said. So up, up. OK, go ahead, complete, use a pen and sketch the graph. Yes, nicely done. Yep, you got it. Very good. Everybody see what he did? All the powers were one power, so it just went through all of them, and that's the graph. All right, on number 12, what is the end behavior? Down. Uh, what function is it going to mimic? Y equals 2 nines x to the power what? This is x squared. This is x cubed, and this is x squared. So how much total power? Seven. Seven. And this will be 2 times 4, or 8. All right, so up, up, or down, up, or up, down. Which one? The ends, I mean. The left side down and the right side up. Yeah. All right. Intercepts, what are the intercepts? Negative 1? One? 1. 1. And what? 3. And how would you get 3? This is 2x minus 1, so that will make it what? 1 half? So 1 half, 1, and negative 1. All right, go ahead. Sketch the graph there, Michael. Oh, that last x minus is x minus 3. Oh, OK, sorry. 
Oh, that's why uh, you said three. This one here? Yeah, the x minus one squared is actually x minus three squared. Oh, okay. All right. So, one. So, Taria, that's why you said three, right? Yes. Yeah. I'm confused on why we have the one half. Because of this. So, if I wrote 2x minus 1 equals 0, and you solve that, what will you get for x? You would get 2x equals 1, and then divide both sides by 2, right? Oh, okay. Do you see why it's 1 half? Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to pick a different color to make sure we have our intercepts. So we have this as an intercept, 1 half, and 3. So our end is here and here. All right, go ahead and sketch the graph there, Michael. Like that. Yep. At the at x equals negative one here, you may want to draw it so you can actually see the cubic. Do you see how I'm making it go just a little bit like that? Here? Yeah. As opposed to just that. You want okay. you want more like that. Does everybody understand how we're graphing these? Are there any questions on these? OK. All right, let's do, let's go back to class 17 and scroll down. Oh, it looks like we already did that. Did anybody do the extra credit questions on that? So I'm going to have you work on extra credit if you want. If you want to do it on your own, you can do that. You are allowed to use Desmos if you want. But I want you to investigate how the graphs look. So do you want me to give you a couple moments in each of the groups to do extra credit, or do you want to do that on your own? Raise your hand if you would like just uh, three or four minutes in class to work on extra credit. Just raise your hand. OK, we have enough people wanting extra credit time, so I'm going to put you back into groups. And we will have you work in teams for, and I'll come and check on you, and then we'll regroup. OK, so let's put you back into groups. And we'll have two groups. All right, so who would like to be Zataria? I'm going to put you in charge. How's that? OK. OK, so you can share. Like if you open up Desmos, you can share your application on your screen, OK? So I'm going to make you a presenter. So now if you click on the little square button with the arrow coming out, you can share application screen, go to Desmos, plot the two curves, and then figure out why it's working the way it's working. OK? You want to try that now before I leave your group and go to the other group? Yes. OK. So go ahead. Click on the little square with the arrow coming out. And it will say Share Application. And then open up Desmos on one of the windows in your computer. Okay, I'm confused. You're confused? 
the square where? So on the bottom right of your screen, do you see how there are like people icon, a bubble icon, and a square with the arrow coming out? Do you see that? Okay, I'll click, see. Okay, click on that. Okay. And then there should be a share application option. Okay. So click on that, then we'll see the screen you see. Okay. Did you do it yet? Yes. Okay. Don't see anything yet. There you go. And then open up Desmos. Okay. Yep, click on it. Okay, so you can enter the questions, graph it, and then come back. Okay. Okay. Hi, Jake. Can you hear me, Jake? Hello. Hello. We're doing group work, so let me see if I can put you in a group. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm late. I was no, no problem. Oh, I am wondering how I can put you in a group. Yeah, if, I, if I ever just like disappear, my Wi-Fi has been going in and out of ever since this whole thing with you know the quarantine, just because there's so much more usage. So ah, like, yeah, yes, that acting real well. So if I like, it may just happen where it just I just disappear, and that's probably it. Yeah, yeah. So what you could do is. All clear, uh, there is like a little audio, so on the bottom right, you see a little um, setting with uh, like a wheel, like a gear. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you click on that, it will give you an option for audio. So that way you can at least have the audio. Okay. Okay, so in case that happens. So Golden Jake, you are not in any groups, so I'm going to see how to put you back into groups, okay? All right, let's see. Let's put you into group one, and let's put you into group two. All right, group two. So, how about, Owen, can I put you in charge? In, sure. All right, so I'm going to make you a presenter. And I'll tell you what you have to do. Open up. So, on the bottom right, do you see the little square with the arrow coming out? Yeah. So, we we'll say share content. Click on that. Uh-huh. And then click on share application screen so we can see your desktop and then open up Desmos. Okay. Does that work? Uh, it's working, yeah. Yep, very good. And then enter the two functions, sketch the graph. Discuss amongst yourself why the graph is what it is, and then I will come back and then we will share it together, okay? Okay. All right. Are you figuring out how to enter things? Yes. Okay, go back to the screen like you were on. All right, what are you trying to enter? 
um, to the power of two. Two to the power of x, you mean? I mean, yeah. So go ahead and enter two, and then go back one more. Yep, and shift six. We'll get you the power. Like hit the shift button and, oh, not shift, uh, yeah, shift button, yeah, shift six. And then type in X or whatever you need to type in. And then uh, use your arrow key to come back down, yep, and then minus whatever you have. Thank you. Yep. Uh, I think you want X there, not four. Yeah. Come down and then minus four. Now, what I would recommend is see the little, um, uh, like a tool, tool button, like what's that called? A wrench. Do you see the wrench symbol on the right? On Desmos, click on it and click on projector mode. Yeah, click on that so that it's just a little darker so we can see. And then also put, take your mouse, hold the graph and drag it down. Yeah, there you go. Go a little bit higher, teeny bit higher. Up. Like drag it, no, up, up, move it up. No, you're, you're going down, but take it up. There, just a teeny bit more. Okay, perfect. That's perfect. Okay, now investigate why the heck the graph looks the way it looks. I'll come back to you. All right, very nice. So now figure out why does the graph look this way? Why should you believe the graph should look like that? Did you figure that out yet? Uh, not really. So make it a teeny bit, like zoom in a little bit. Yeah, that's good. So look at the intercepts first. Are the intercepts exactly the same as the parabola graph? No. Oh, what? I mean the x-intercepts. Yes. The x-intercepts are the same. Why do you think that is? Um. So look what happens when you plug in x equals 1 in that first one. In the, in, I mean, x equals 1 in the g of x function. Look what happens. What do you mean? Yep, right there. 2 to the power 1 is how much? Like, do you want me to put it in like that? No, no, like, no, no, don't put it in. Go back and make it x. I'm just saying, imagine putting 2 to the power 1. What's 2 to the power 1, the value? 2. 2. And 2 minus 2 is? 0. There you go. That's why x equals 1 is your x-intercept. That does make sense. And what about 2 squared? For this one? Yeah. If it was 2 squared? Mm -hmm. You have 4. 4, four minus but 4 is 0. So they both have the same intercepts. However, in a normal 2 to the x graph, what would it look like? 2 to the x has 0 as your asymptote, right? So you have to figure out why. What is your new asymptote? Put your mouse on the middle of that graph and drag it down just a teeny bit so you can see the asymptote. Can you see what the asymptote is? Is it 8? Yeah. Why do you think it's 8? Because it's like 
this is like approaching it. Right, but what I'm saying is from the function itself, figure out why the, gra why the asymptote is what it is. So we're going to discuss this in a bigger group, like together, okay? Okay. All right. All right, let's see. Once everybody is here, then we'll ask uh, On or Zataria, one of you. On, can you uh, share your screen again? Sure. Okay. Do you see it? Yep. And I'm going to have you do one more thing. See the little uh, wrench tool on the right hand side? Yep, click on it and click on projector mode on the top. Yeah. There you go, just so it's a little darker and we can see it better. Nice. All right, so do you want to tell people why x equals 1 and x equals 2 are your intercepts? Um, like For, on the graph or like in? In uh, the equation. Uh, because if you put in one into, like if you put a one into here, then you'll get two, and then two minus two is zero. It's like that what you were talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then same thing for here. Like if you do, if you plug in two here, then it's four, and then four minus four would also be zero. And then on the first graph, one minus one is zero. Yeah, so that it just stays at the yeah. yeah. So you can see they both have the same intercepts. They're both facing up, up, just like the parabola thing. So now the question is, why is it that 8 is the asymptote? Zataria's group. Did you figure out why 8 was the asymptote? Yes, no, something? Did you figure that out? I didn't. I mean, in your group. So I'm asking the whole class now, why should 8 be the asymptote? So I'm going to take a picture of this just so we can come back together and I can share. So, oops. All right, I'm just going to take this. All right, so uh, let's see, who is presenting right now? Owen, can you stop your sharing? And then I will share my screen. Does that work? Yeah. All right. All right, so let me get a new document here. Oh, that's one question I wanted to ask. When I have this big screen like that, do you still see me, like my video, or do you only see the word screen? Like, do you see me, me, my face? We see you in the corner. You're very small. Oh, okay. But you still see me, right? Yeah. So if I go like this, you can see my hands? <laughs> okay. All right, look. So take a look at uh, this. Oh, actually, let me put it in the paint because that will make it easier. Because then I can draw. So look. When you just draw 2 to the power x, 2 to the power x graph, do you remember how it looks like this? Can you see that? Can everybody see that? This is the graph of y equals 2 to the power x. Everybody see that? Yes, no, yes. something. Yeah. yeah. So when you have 2 to the power x minus 2, what does the minus 2 do to the graph? It will be the same graph as that, but what will happen to it? It moves it to the left. So to the left would be if you had 2 or to the, the right. power x minus 2. Then it will go right 2. But we have 2 to the power x minus 2. 2 to the power x, and the minus 2 is here. What will happen to this graph? 
this one. See, this is something different. So we'll get rid of that. What happens to this function? What you're going to do to it? It goes where? Down. Down. How much? Two. Two. So one, two. You will have asymptote, and then you will go like this. That's the graph of 2 to the power x minus 2. What's the graph of 2 to the power x minus 4? What will you do to that graph? Go down 4. Go down 4. So the negative 2 is a y equals negative 2 is asymptote for that one. y equals negative 4 is asymptote to that one. When you multiply, what will happen to that? Negative 2 times negative 4 is how much? 8. 8. That is why you have an asymptote at 8 here. Oh. Can you see that? Can everybody see that? All right. So this will help you finish off your extra credit if you wanted to do it. Are there any other questions on homework? Uh, or I should say class 17. Any questions on class 17? Just raise your hand and ask. All right, let's do a attendance quiz. And I would like you to sketch the graph off. And let's do it this way. I'm going to sh stop sharing my screen, but I need you to look at the question. So can you still see the screen? All right, okay. sketch. So attendance quiz. Sketch the graph of, and we'll do y equals negative 2x. Uh, x plus 3 times x cube x plus 5 square. All right, go ahead and sketch the graph of that function. Go ahead and do that. When you're done, click on the, raise your hand, basically. If you raise your hand, I'll know that you finished. And then I will discuss it together. So you will find the end behavior. Oh, who can tell me the end behavior? This we should do together. End behavior would be like what? Y equals what? Negative 2 times what? X times X cubed times X squared. How much power of X? Anyone? Um, would it be 6? Six. So because it's x to the 6, it's even power, so it's up, up. But the negative, what does the negative do to the graph? Send it down. Send it down. Good, good. So down, down. OK, now sketch the graph. All right, you'll have to tell me what the intercepts are going to be. Uh, 
think the uh, X intercepts are negative five. Negative, negative five. Three, negative three and one. Okay. I think. So negative five. Do you say negative three? Yes. Okay. And what? One? Yeah. Okay. And it's down, down. All right, what should I do next? At negative five, is it going through or is it like a parabola shape? It's a parabola. Parabola. All right. So it's going to go this way. Okay, then what? Snake. Uh, oh, snake. Snake would be here, right? But you're looking at three. What happens at three, which is here? Is it power? How? What power is it? One power, which means what? Snake? Just go through it. Ah, yeah, just go through it. Good. So we'll just turn around and go back up straight. Okay. Now you can do your snake. Now you can do your snake. There you go. That is your graph. Any questions there? So there's no asymptotes then for this? That's correct, yes. Very good, very good. Polynomial functions have no asymptotes. The only time you would have asymptotes is if you have denominators or if you have 2 to the power x, e to the power x. They will have horizontal asymptotes. And if you do natural log x functions, then you would have vertical asymptotes. OK? All right. Any questions here? Is there anyone who needs help on these kind of questions? We'll do one more if you want. Raise your hand if you would like me to do one more example. OK. Oh, OK. Gold, you want one more example? All right, let's try. Sketch the graph off. Let's make that. 4, x plus 1, make that an x plus 1 to the power second. And let's make that x minus 4 squared. All right, go ahead and do that. So gold, this is your problem. Everybody should do it, but I would like gold to try it first. Gold, can you tell me what the end behavior would be? It will be 4x to what power? Gold? Can you hear me, Gold? Maybe she can't hear me. Who can tell me? Oh, Gold, can you hear me? No, I can't. Oh, you can't hear me? Second, is that second power? Oh, are you, oh, you giving me the answer? I said second power. Second power. So tell me how you got the second power. Remember, n behavior means the highest power of x that you will get if you open up all the brackets. So look what we have. We have x. We have x squared and another x squared. So total power will be how much? Count the powers total. Hmm? It's huh. twice, two. Two? No, it won't be two because if you look just from this one factor alone, you will get x squared. And then yes. you will get another x squared from here and then another x from here. So total x power would be what? Five. five. Nicely done. So if it's five, that means it's odd power and it's a positive four here, which means that left hand is down and right hand is up. And let's take this and put it into our paint so we can graph it. All right, so here is my function, and you said x 
4 x to the fifth. So here is my axis. Remember, 4 x, oops. 4 x to the fifth. This part here, the graph of that function would be, oops, this doesn't work the same way as the, we'll just have to use the pencil. This is a shape of x to the fifth graph. Can you see that? That's why left hand is on the bottom and the right hand is up. All right, Gold, tell me what the intercepts are, like where you get zeros. Set each factor to zero and tell me what you get. What you going to get from here? From here? It's 4x plus 4. Say that again. 4x plus 4. 4x plus 4. No, you're just looking for which, and actually we have a teeny little problem. Hold on. You want this to be a minus 1. If you're looking for intercepts, you have to set each term to 0. That's what we've been doing, right? So x minus 4 is 0 when x equals what? Hello? When x is 1. When x is 1, yeah, x equals 1 will make this 0. Good. What about this one? The second term here. What will make that a 0? Gold? X. What value of x will make this second term 0? Anyone can answer, not just gold. That's OK. That's why we're doing this. Anyone can help her? What will make x plus 1 a 0? What factor will you get out of there? Hello? Minus 1. Yeah, did you say minus 1? Yes. Yes. Minus 1 plus 1 will give you 0. Gold, do you see that? If you just take x plus 1 and set it to 0 and solve for x, what do you get? Gold? Yeah, you plus a negative. Negative there. Negative 1? Negative 1 to negative yeah. 0. That's right. So if you do that with each factor, do that with each one. So here you will have x minus 4 equals 0, which will give you x equals what? Tell me. Plus 4. Plus 4, very good. And the first one, which is x minus 1 equals 0, which will give you x equals 1. So x equals negative 1, x equals 4, and x equals 1. Those are your intercepts. Do you see how we got the intercepts by setting each one to 0? Gold, are you OK with that? Yeah. OK. So now when we go back, let's take our so is this how we get the points? Yes. Yes, yes. That is exactly how you're going to get the points. So let's put them here. All right, tell me what points to plot then. We said x. Where are those? Those are over here. I can't find. Right here. Let me actually cut and bring them on over for us. It doesn't let me graph here, so that's why we have to put them over here. Here are your points. Can you see them? I see. Okay. All right, tell me what to plot. When x, x equals negative 1, that will be here. Mm -hmm. x equals 4 will be here. And x equals 1 will be here. Do you see the intercepts? 1, 4, 1. Negative 1, 4, and 1. Can you see that? Yes, ma'am. All right. We're going to start here on this end. So look at 4. It's x minus 4 squared. Square means what? 
cross through or parabola shape? Yes? Gold? I don't know. Oh, yes, you do. Close your eyes. No, really, close your eyes. I can't see you, but you can trust me. Close your eyes. Are you closing your eyes? Yes, ma'am. All right, think of shape of x squared. What does it look like? Describe it to me. What do you see in your, in your head? It's like that. Which way? I'll give you options. Is it this? One, two, three, or four? One, two, three, four. Which one? It's three. Aha. You said, I don't know. That is what you said. We all heard you. Yeah, that's how it feels. Yes, that's how it might feel, but it's not true. You can't believe just because you feel it. So square is this way. At four, you have a square. You agree with that? Yes, ma'am. All right. It has to go through one. One comes from here. So is it one, two, three, or four? If it's x to power one, which one, which shape? One, two, three, or four? One. So our graph is going to turn around and go straight through. Yeah. Now negative one comes from here, squared. So square means parabola shape or straight through. So you have to tell me. And look at where our graph is. Remember, the other end has to be down here. And here is the point. So one, two, three, or four. Which one? For which one? For x plus 1 squared. This one. It's number one. Number one. X plus 1 squared, though. This one. You have to think about, close your eyes and think about X plus 1 bracket square. Square means what? Hello? Gold. X squared is what shape? It's like the U. Yes. Very good. It's a U shape. So, this graph, which is going down, has to turn around and do your U shape. Now you have your graph. Do you see that? Uh, yeah? So step one, end behavior. Step two, find all the intercepts. Step three, it's you have to pick one of these shapes and put it together. That's all there is to it. OK? We can do more examples when you and I meet also today. OK. OK? All right. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, of course. So now let's go to the Rational Functions project. So that's a project that you hopefully downloaded. And otherwise, just open it now on your computer through Canvas. And we are going to ask you what the shape of certain graphs look like. So hopefully you did Home 18. It says on home 18, oh, home 18? Yeah, rational functions. So it says, watch the video. Please make sure you completed project one. And then you have to answer some questions. So let me ask you the following. So let me go back to this function that Gold just finished doing. If, say again? No, no. Oh. So here's my function. If I wanted to know what is the function graph of 1 over 4 times x minus 1 times x plus 1 squared times x minus 4 squared. We did this way at the beginning of the semester. If I take a graph which you have right here, and I wanted to know what the graph looks like when you invert it. All the places where you have zeros become your vertical asymptotes. Do you remember this? And so you're going to have an explosion. 
What does explosion mean? What will happen to this thing that's facing down like here? What will happen to it? <sighs> Blew up. What happens? Anything that blows up, if it's facing down, what will happen to it? If it explodes. Hello? It'll go down. Yeah, it's already going down. So if you exploded it, what happens to it? What happens? Anyone? Up. Up. So I'll use a uh, blue color or, yeah, let's do blue color to sketch the graph. So this is going down, so it will be going up. This is going up, so it will be going down. This is coming down, so it will go up. This is going up like this, so it will be going like that. Can you see what happens when you do inversions? So let's go into decimals and show you some things here. Can everybody see my decimal screen, yes or no? Yes. Okay. So if you have y equals x minus 1 times x plus 1, you have this parabola. And if you raise it to some power, it will be that shape. What would happen to, actually, let's make that f of x. So what would happen to the function 1 over f of x? Look. Can you see that? Oops, sorry. Look what happens. So the red graph is our polynomial function. But x minus 1, so x equals 1, and we'll make that a dotted line. And x equals negative 1, make that a dotted line. Do you see how where your red function, where your red function is 0 here and here, those are the places where you have vertical asymptotes. As x goes to infinity, this red graph goes to up to infinity, and 1 over infinity is close to 0. Does everybody see what happens to a rational function 1 over something? You have vertical asymptotes where you had x-intercepts, and all the other ones just got inverted. So I ask you, here's a question for you. Let's go do, so sketch the graph of f of x equals x plus 1 cubed and x minus 1 cubed. So first just do that graph and then sketch the graph of all right, go ahead, sketch the graph of these two functions. I'll give you a few moments. You can do it on the same coordinate axis. And let's put it back into paint. What should we do first? Actually, let's do this. I am going to have you in groups again. So let me put two groups. All right, go ahead and do this first one is group one. Second one is group two. Please write the problems down before I put you into groups because once I put you into groups, you won't see the... Yes. Okay, so you see the problem, you wrote it down. Group one, can you see the screen? I mean, can you see, see what problem you have to do? Yes. Yes. OK. How about Jake? Can I put you in charge? Jake, are you there? Can I put you in charge of this group? Uh, sure. All right. So I'm going to make you a presenter. You can use your whiteboard. Or you can use Word, whatever you would like, and see if you can sketch the graph, okay?
Okay, can you go back to it real quick? Oh, yeah. Uh, here it is. Do you see it? Right. Yeah, I just had to reprint the screen. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good idea. Good idea. Okay. Do you have it now? Yeah, I got it. All right. Okay, make sure the whole group got it. All right, group two. Can you hear me? Group two, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Isaiah, can I put you in charge of group two? Sure. All right, I'll make you the presenter. You can do it on the whiteboard or you can just, when we come together, tell me what you have. Do you have the problem that you're gonna work on? Do you write it down? Yeah, go ahead, write it down. Isaiah, did you write the problem? You can share the whiteboard and draw it on there, okay? All right. Okay, I will go check on group one and I will be back. Make sure your whole group got it. All right, how are you doing here, group one? Doing all right. All right, Jake, are you presenting yeah, anything? Over, it just, they uh, become separated and flip over the x axis, right? Yes. Okay. So go ahead and share your whiteboard. Do you know how to do that? Uh, so there's a little square yeah. with the arrow coming out of it on the bottom right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then just say share, okay. yep. Yeah. There you go. All right, go ahead and sketch the graph. Ooh, how'd you get the line to be so straight? Uh, there's a line, there's a shape button, and it's line. Okay, I did not know that. Okay, yeah, cool. Uh, and then, so the first one, what is it? It's, uh, yeah. Let's pretend those are straight too. Yeah. So we have an intercept. What is that? So the x to the six was going down, down, right? Or is it up, up? So you have to do x plus one cubed and x minus one cubed. So yeah, cube right. and cube, so x to the six, so it's up, up. Up, up, so then it's, yeah, it's then it's. And then it's, right. yep, yeah, perfect. Very good. That's the first graph. So now when you blow it up, what does it look like? You can draw it on the same one, just use a different color. Yeah, just, uh, oh, I see there's the colors. Then. Okay, so then if you blow it up, it would, um, wouldn't it just... And draw the vertical asymptotes also. Oh, okay. First draw vertical asymptotes. So where it cuts through the zero. Oh, how did you get rid of just that? Uh, it was a selected line, so I could just kind of direct it. I see. Just delete it. Okay, okay. So use a different color, and where you have intercepts, which is one and negative one, draw vertical dotted lines. Yeah. Very good. And now I'll blow it up. So then would it do this? Kind of? Mm, almost. So if you look, this part here, it's positive. Positive will stay positive if you do one over. So it won't go underneath. What will it do? So get rid of this piece here. It will go like this. Because it will still stay positive. Yeah, I don't see that. So it will go like this. Let me use a different color here. Like that. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. 
right? So then wouldn't there be, so there be two asymptotes Yes. Yep. Right. There will be two so, yeah. vertical asymptotes and then there will also be a horizontal asymptote. That is correct. So finish the rest of it. This. Yep. And what about the middle? Oh shoot, is that um oh wait, no, no, no. Yeah, I just see that there is a this. Yes, but not up there. Because it's negative, one over negative will stay negative. Can you get rid of just that? There you go, it'll be down here. Down here. Uh, nope. So get rid of it again. It, it, yeah, it's not up. That's okay. I'll, I'll, can you get, yeah. So it's one over, so it will be like this. Can you see that? Okay, I'm going to cut and paste this because then when we come back, you can share, tell people why you did what you did. All right, thank you. I'm going to go check on the other group. All righty, how are you doing here? Oh, no, that's a one. Is this the first one? Is your f of x graph here? Yeah. OK. So we have x plus 1 to the fourth power, x minus 1 squared. So it won't look like this, will it? At x plus 1, so 6 power. So up, up is correct. So you will have this, and then a parabola shape, and another parabola shape. It will look like this, right? Can you see that? Can you see why that is? Hi, Zara. Is it supposed to be x to the 6? x plus 1 to the 4th power. Yeah, x to the 6. So that's why it's this and this. But then it's x plus 1 to the 4 power, which means it's going to be a parabola shape here, and x minus 1 squared, which is also a parabola. Can you see? Yes, no, something? Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now you will have asymptotes here. All right, give me the rest of it. What happens to this middle graph here? This one. What will happen to this piece here? Isela? Uh, won't it flip? Yep. Good, good. What happens to this piece here? Anyone in your group? Gold Which or part? this part here? Oh. It's going Does up. It go down? Yep. Very good. And the same thing will happen on this end. All right, very good. I'm going to take grab it as a screen because that way you can tell people what happened to it, OK? All right, we'll stop groups and see what happens. All right, take a look, everyone. Is everyone back? Is everyone back? All right, take a look. So here is the graph of 1 over x plus 1 cubed, x minus 1 cubed. The blue graph is the original polynomial function. They have asymptotes, and then it blew up. Same thing here, asymptotes and blew up. Is everyone OK 
with the problems that people did in group one and group two? We can't see your screen. Oh, shoot. Okay, hold on. What about now? Can you see now? Yeah. Okay. So the first group took asymptotes and inverted the graph and had this graph. Second group had this on their screen, and then this was their graph. Are there any questions whatsoever in problem number one or two? Any questions? Yes. Yes, go ahead. Ask question. Was that gold? Yes, ma'am. All right, ask away. The post graph. Yeah. My question is, uh, I really don't know how we got the negative one. Yeah, negative one and one. X value. Yeah. So one, zero, and one. Yeah. That's a good question. So take a look here. We have x plus 1 cubed, right? Oops. Hold on. x plus 1 cubed here. What will make that 0? Go ahead. Just like you did before, x plus 1 set to 0 will give you x equals what? I placed the negative 1. There you go. That's x equals negative 1. So that's why negative 1 is an intercept. What about this one set to zero? I placed the positive, you know, like one. Yes, good, good, positive one. You got it. So one and negative one are the intercepts, yes? X equals one, X equals negative one are intercepts, which means that if you look at the graph, X equals negative one and X equals one will become vertical asymptotes. Does that answer your question? One of them is negative one. Yeah, one of them is negative one, and one of them is positive one. You OK with that? Gold? Which part is not really? Maybe I'm not understanding your question. Hold on. I'm going to make this a little smaller just so I can put it here and so I can see. OK, what is it that you were saying? I thought, I thought we were supposed to solve it first. Yep, solve it first. That will give you your asymptotes. Yeah. 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 X equals 0, x equals 0. I didn't no, not x equals 0. The x plus 1 equals 0. OK, so that's what we plotted. Yeah, so if you take, that's what you plotted, yes. So this will become x equals negative 1 and x equals 1. You agree with that? OK. So those are the points that we want to graph, right? Oh, OK. So, so your graph, so can you see that then, why it's 1 and negative 1? So what about the cube? Yeah, the cube, the cube will affect how the shape looks. So the cube, that means it's the snake shape. That's why he has this shape here. And that's why he has this shape here. So this behavior is the cubic part. Do you see that? What does it do to it? What does it do to it? It makes it the cubic shape. So your graph will be like that. So here and here, that's where the cubic part plays a role. You have the cubic shape here, here and here. Do you see that? Gold? That's the polynomial graph, right? Once you have that, then you're just sketching the graph with inverting it. So everything blew up. So that's why you had, they had this graph here. This part here went upside down, and here you had this. That's what happened when you did one over. And we'll do more examples, so that will make it clear. So I have a question for you now. What if I had the same graph as that, but I said plus 4 or plus 5? What will that do to the graph? 
Anybody can answer. Hmm? Move it up five. Good for you. Move it up five. What if I say minus five? Move it down. Move it down. What if I said x up here? What changes would you make? So that's the kind of investigation that you are going to do. So here comes Desmos. Uh, let's bring Desmos. So let's start with something simple. 1 over x minus 1. Here's the graph of 1 over x minus 1. What do you think will happen to 1 over x minus 1 plus 2? We moved up 2. So this 2 is going to be your horizontal asymptote, and x equals 1 is your vertical asymptote. So x equals 1, we will make that a dotted line. And y equals 2, which will make also a dotted line. And that is the graph. Can you see that? Can everybody see that? OK, but now what happens if I said 1 over x minus 1 plus 2x? Look what happens. So x equals 1 is still the asymptote, but now you have y equals 2x is your asymptote. So in general, if you graph things, this, if you write it as a remainder, which is 2x, and then 1 over x minus 1. Then whatever this is is your asymptote. Whatever makes the denominator 0 is your vertical asymptote. So now I ask you 1 over x minus 1 squared. So here's that graph. And tell me, what would happen if I add a 2x to it? Take a look. Do you see how 2x and x equals 1 are your asymptotes? So your job is to figure out what happens. Oh, what happens if I put x plus 2 on top divided by x minus 1 squared and plus 2 or something? Look. And then if I say uh, x, 2x, So your job, so I'm going to put you into groups. When you come back to next class, you will have the entire project done. So open up your rational functions project, and I'll show you what you have to do. And actually, I'm going to see there's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. So four. So we're going to put three groups. And each group will do first four on one of the pages. So group one will do A, B, C, D, group two will do E, F, G, H, and group three will do I, J, K, L. And I'm going to have you into three groups. So you're going to open up Desmos and do it. So actually, let's do one of each group. So I don't know which group they randomly puts into groups, so we'll start with the first one. What kind of graph will have that shape? Look at part A. What kind of graph? Look, it's moved up how many? Um, that's just one. So here, I'll go a little closer so you can see. So it's moved up how much? Three? Uh, two. One, two. Oh. Can you see oh. that? Can you see the move? Oops, oops, sorry. I'm having a little trouble moving this. All right. And what about x? x equals negative 1, and then y equals 2 are your asymptotes. So what kind of shape will produce that? That's what you have to figure out. So let's get rid of all of this. So x plus 1, and then plus 2. Does that have the shape that you want? x equals negative 1 is your asymptote. And y equals 2 is your asymptote. Does this look like problem number 1 on the project? Yes or no? 
project. Say again. I don't have the copy of the project. You have to download it from Canvas. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So in the first one, here is the project. This is the graph they asked you. Does it look like or does our Desmos graph look like this? Yes or no? Somebody say something. Hello? Okay. Let's so that's group one. Let's do group two problem number one. If you want it to look like this, again x equals negative one is your asymptote, and then this one looks like uh, 3 and negative 3, so x plus 3 is your line. So let's go back to Desmos and take 1 over x plus 1 squared plus x plus 3. And if that doesn't quite do it, you can make that power 4 or power 3. That's how you're going to play, or power 1. So this will be y equals x plus 3 and x equals negative 1. Does this look like the graph they want? Do you see how I'm playing in Desmos and getting the graphs? So that will be group two, and then for group three, let's try one of those. If you want it to cross and go up, then you have to change the numerator, and the numerator has to intersect. So you may want to play with your decimals, and you can change that to the power like three, and maybe x. So if you look here, See how it intersected it? You can put negative. So you just play with it. So I'm going to give you a few moments and see if you can come up with at least one graph. In each group, you should come up with one. So we're going to put you into groups, three groups, and you are going to share your work when we come back. So let's go to group and we'll say three groups. Yep, you are group one, and you will attempt one of the problems. So instead, there are four on the first page. I did the first one. Why don't you work on the second one? Get a graph that works, that looks like problem number two. Figure out what kind of Desmos entry you're going to put. Uh, Jackie, can I put you in charge? So we're doing B? Yeah, you're doing B. So Jackie, you are in charge of your group right now. Are you there, Jackie? Jackie, can you hear me? Jake, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can All hear right. you. Oh, okay. All right, Jake, you're in charge. All right, group two. Michael, can I put you in charge? Or Joe, can I put you in charge? Michael or Joe, who wants to be in charge? I don't really know what I'm doing, so. That's OK. We all are in the same boat. So I'll make you a presenter. Who said that? Was that Joe? Are you talking? Yeah. OK. So you have to put up expressions. So let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Uh, no. No? Uh, okay, well done. Hmm. All right, can you see my screen now? Yeah. Okay. 
So what you have to do is come up with an equation that has the graph that you are looking for. So like, for example, you're doing number f. So come up with some algebraic expressions, play with it, and come up with expressions so that your graph looks like how it's in problem number f. OK. OK, so it should look like this. OK? All right, play with it, and I'll come back. All right, group three. Oh, Isaiah, you're the only one left in there? Yeah. Oh, OK, I'll be your group partner. <laughs> so you, I'm going to share my screen with you. And you are looking at problem number J. Actually, let's do K because that'll be easier for you. So do you see how it's a parabola shape for asymptote, right? Uh -huh. And x equals negative 1 is your asymptote. So all you have to do is come up with equations whose graph will look like that. Remember, if I put 2, I get 2 as my asymptote. If I want x squared as your asymptote, then let's put x squared here. Do you see how I got my x squared to be my asymptote? Yeah. OK. So now your job is to figure out what this should look like so that the graph is what it looks like in here. Do you see how both ends are up? Uh -huh. OK. So if you want that, right now one end is down, one end is up. So it means you have to change this bottom. What do you think we should make the power to be? Change the power. So an even power? All right. Look at you. You're smart. You just did it. This is your graph, then. So this is your equation. 1 over x plus 1 squared plus x squared. And so you're just going to create equations for all of them. So there's only two more you have to do. Are you OK with that? Which one? Uh, on that last page, you will see. So we just did k. So you have to do i j and l and i we did it together so you just have to do j and l okay. what, what will make this not have an asymptote on the bottom if you don't want asymptote in the bottom you just make that x squared plus one like that do you see that uh -huh. All right, so you play with it, and I'll come back. I'm going to stop sharing with you here, and I'll bring the whole group together, OK? OK. All right. All righty. What did people get? I know Isaiah got uh, two problems done. How about the rest of you? For B, we got uh, 1 over x squared plus 1. All right, hold on, hold on. Let me uh, share my screen. All right, tell me, what what did you have? We had uh, 1B. OK. Uh, 1 over x squared plus 1. x squared plus 1, like that? I believe so. All right, let me see. Part B, uh, except on the x equals negative 2 is your asymptote. Is that what it is? Yeah. So, oh, okay. Okay. so just change that to plus 2. Now you have it. That's OK. OK. And then, I, then that, that plus 1, should. that's what I kind of meant. I meant the x plus 1 squared. Oh, OK, OK. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you mean. Yes, that will do it. That, that yeah, will. Yep, yep. No, you got it. Very good. All right, what's the last group? 
The second group, what did you have? Um, I don't think I exactly figured it out, but I got some. All right, let's take a look. Tell me what to type. Okay, I have two over um, in parentheses x plus one squared, mm -hmm. and then plus x plus three. X plus three. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yep, that will do it for you. Okay. Let's just type x plus three here and see. Yeah, I think. And what number was that? Which part? F. F. Look at that. Perfect. Beautifully done. Oh, except they want negative two as your intercept. So yeah, you're just I... so just make that x plus two on top. Okay. And let's go back and make sure. Um and this is one, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so you just have to make change this. It's probably that. Nope. Four. There you go. You might just have to play with the maybe minus one. Just play with that because Yeah, it's probably like that. This will do it. So you have to play with the asymptote, but that's a pretty good start. So your homework is finish the rational functions project and then finish uh, your homework. Let's see, homework, which one? Homework 18, yeah, homework 18 and attempt class 18. But homework 18 and rational functions project, and then we'll work on class 18. Okay? okay. All right, see you Thursday. Adios. All right, bye.